the mango season is just getting over. In India, it's a big thing. If you looked at the mango tree in the month of October, November, December, you didn't see any sweetness dripping out of it. Suddenly in January, February, flowers came. They were not as attractive as jasmine or rose flowers or something, some tiny little flowers came. Suppose you do not know this is a mango tree and you tested it, you take a leaf and bite it, it was quite bitter. But suddenly in the month of April, May, huge drops of sweetness <laughs> hanging there in the tree. So, if you did not have prayer, prayer knowledge that this is a mango tree, did you think this tree is actually manufacturing this sweetness? But you think suddenly in April sweetness came? It has been slowly manufacturing this sweetness and it put it out at a certain season, but it's been on right through the year, isn't it? Mangoes happen only in one season. You notice the sweetness only at a certain time. This does not mean the mango tree was not striving and working to produce that sweetness. You cut any part of the mango tree and taste it, you will not find <laughs> a slightest tinge of sweetness, believe me. But when the mango comes, how much sweetness? Where is it coming from? It's been working on it, you couldn't see it. Similarly, is it a process? For sure it's a process. But can everybody see the process, identify the process? No. When somebody is evolving on the spiritual path, others thought he's a nutcase, somebody thought he's vagrant, somebody thought he's a vagabond, somebody thought he's something else. But when the sweetness came, everybody who tasted realized that this is a fantastic thing. So, nothing in the universe happens bang, bang, bang. Everything is a process. Can you identify the process? Can you recognize the process is the question. Generally, anybody who carries, generally among human beings when they're children, any child which carries a certain level of genius within him, which is irrepressible. Everybody has genius within them, but they're repressible. Systems in the society, their own fears, their own anxieties, their own need for security represses their genius. Every human being has some kind of genius, but over ninety percent of the human beings never find expression to it because they give in to other things. Things become… other things become more important. When you were twelve, fifteen, you thought, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll go to the moon. But you saw the neighborhood girl <laughs> and started calling her the moon. <laughs> moon disappeared. So, like this, in everybody the possibility is wide open. The thing is, can you sustain the process and allow it to become that possibility? Between possibility and reality there is a distance. Most people neither have the courage nor the conviction to walk the distance. Largely spiritual process, is a kind of an entertainment. Go to discourse after discourse, discourse after discourse, read more and more books and debate how your Atman, Paramatman, your soul is floating here, there and about heaven and hell and everything, but do nothing about this. It's largely like entertainment. So, there is a process for sure. 
the process can be approached consciously or it may be an unconscious process, but you're doing the right things. This is the beauty of this universe. Whether you know or you do not know, knowingly or unknowingly, with discipline or with indiscipline, with love or with hate, if you do the right things, right things will happen to you. That is the beauty of this universe. So Shankara, Adi Shankara said, yoga rathova, boga rathova. Somehow, either through yoga or boga, somehow do it. Somehow find the truth of your inner nature because what we are considering as truth is simply this. Whatever works on all levels of life must be the truth, isn't it? Hmm? Whatever really works on all levels of life must be the truth. Whatever you know in your life, test it right now because you have a mind which can project. Right now, you are striving for a certain level of income or a certain kind of house or a car or something else or something else. Put yourself in different stages of life and see if it still means a lot to you. See, suppose not tomorrow, let's say hundred years later, you're on your deathbed. Just see if your jewelry, your makeup, your car will mean something to you on that day. This does not mean you must give it up today. It is just that you must keep it in its place, you must not carry it in your heart. <laughs> there is a difference between using something and being used by something. Most people, most people do not know how to use the things that they buy. The things that they buy are using them up. They're enslaving the human being. Whatever things you want to use, you can use, that's not an issue. But the problem is, you let those things use you, this is not okay. So if you just take care that you are not used by anything. You understand the limited role that everything has in your life. The limited role of your education, the limited role of your career, the limited role of your marriage, the limited role of your relationships, the lim limited role of your wealth, the limited role of everything that you're doing. If you understand where one thing begins and where it ends, then you don't have to do anything, spiritual process is on. When the season is right, the flowers will bo bloom and mangoes will come.